Hey there, singers! When you think about your singing tone, do the words Jekyll and Hyde come to mind? <laughs> My name is Karen O'Connor, and this is the first of two lessons in which I'm going to be giving you some tools and talking about how to manage this Jekyll and Hyde behavior of our singing tones. In today's lesson, I'm going to be sharing an imagery that my students and I find to be very effective in helping us to equalize the qualities of our vowels. And in the next lesson, I'm going to talk about how to manage this Jekyll and Hyde behavior that results from changing acoustical and registration events throughout the scale. A lot of this Jekyll and Hyde behavior emerges when singers are moving between front and back vowels. Our front vowels are those vowels that are made with the tongue slightly fronted, a little bit more forward inside the mouth space. That's your E's and your A's and your A's, while your back vowels are created with the tongue slightly farther back inside the mouth space and usually a little bit lower. Those are your A's and your O's. And of course there are vowels in between that as well. And we tend to have this awareness, this sense of the front vowels feeling like they're placed very far forward and they're bright and ringing, while our back vowels feel like they're placed really far back and they're kind of flat and dull sounding. Now those back vowels can often sound like the alter ego gone rogue for a few different reasons. One of which is that we are heavily influenced by our vocal models. If, for example, we live in a geographic area or we live in a family, in which those back vowels are pronounced a little farther back and they're a little bit darker, perhaps a little gagged, that's what we've come to learn to expect of those vowels and how we are likely to pronounce them as well. Now a second really common reason for those back vowels sounding a little bit alter egoish is that as we move up the scale and go through our passaggio, there is a natural instinct for the larynx to want to rise. And then we have this sort of subconscious instinct to stuff it back down. And we do that by using tongue root pressure, by shoving it down with our tongue roots. And that creates that sort of dull, Kermit the Frog kind of sound. And when that sound is so back and so dark, it is going to sound starkly different from our front vowel series. Now yes, every single vowel is created with its own unique vocal tract configuration, its own shaping of the articulators that give it its unique resonance properties, its unique acoustic characteristics that help to define that vowel. However, when we are singing, we don't want this Jekyll and Hyde effect. We want to bring the personalities of those different vowels a little bit closer together. We want all those vowels to have roughly the same amount of ring and depth in them. And a lot of this comes down to mindfulness. Our being aware of the fact that we do have certain tendencies when it comes to pronouncing our vowels and that those front and back vowels have some unique characteristics. And understanding that can really take us a long way and being very mindful of how we're defining our vowels is really going to help us to equalize our scale. And I've talked about equalization of the scale in a previous video. I've talked about horizontal equalization in which every vowel sung in the same pitch has roughly the same amount of depth and ring. And I've also talked about vertical equalization in which the same vowel sung across all pitches retains roughly the same amount of depth and ring. And that's the effect that we want to create. We want to create this illusion of sameness across all the vowels and across all the pitches. Now, I'm not talking about artistic choices. I'm not talking about not altering our tone for artistic purposes. I am just talking about removing a little bit of this. So the imagery that I'm going to propose today involves thinking of the directionality of tone a little bit like it occurs on a teacup hook. So a lot of singers, when they are singing through the passaggio in particular, or when they're singing their back vowel series, they sing a little bit like this. So let's say this is the tone, and the tone is moving along, and then as they get through that passaggio, what they do is they start to back off a little bit on the breath pressure, and they start to pull the sound back, and they hook back this way. And then as they get over that little passaggio hump, then they start singing 
with this tone that isn't so back anymore. <laughs> Right? I'm exaggerating this a little bit, right? But we hear this in a lot of singers. They get this really dull, gagged sound, and you hear what happens to my registration, right? My voice broke. My voice broke because I am trying to stuff the larynx down with my tongue root. I'm engaging that tongue root and putting pressure on the larynx, which in turn prevents it from being a flexible mechanism. And so we get registration issues that don't really need to be there. So if instead we think of the voice as hooking this way and the tone is anchoring here for every single vowel sound and every single pitch. Now this isn't about forward placement, but it's about that idea of getting a little bit of E in all of my vowels. All we're talking about is the sense of mindfulness of our tone having a similar quality, a similar amount of depth and ring across all pitches and across all vowels. Right? So if we try this instead and hook the voice this way, and what you get is a consistency across all the pitches. Still sounds like the same vowel, it's not distorting in any way, and I still have the same amount of brightness and darkness in my tone. And there's no register break. I move between chest voice and head voice without that break being in there because I'm allowing the laryngeal mechanism to be flexible. And we don't want this sense that this hook is constantly moving and changing directions, that our E's and A's are hooking out front while our A's and O's are hooking out back, right? E -A -O. We want this sense of everything being kind of anchored, being produced along the same plane, we'll say, and having this very consistent line, roughly the same amount of depth and ring across all the different vowels. E -A -O. And really this is just about mindfulness. All it does is encourage us to think a little bit differently about those vowels that maybe we don't really produce or define quite as well as we otherwise should. And this is not in any way going to compromise our diction or distort the vowel. It's going to instead help us to clarify that vowel, help us to define it more clearly and more precisely. So hopefully this image of hooking forward as opposed to hooking back becomes a really effective tool in your own voice training. Let me know how you do with this, what you think of this little imagery. Leave your comments or questions in the comment section below. If you are looking for some additional guidance in your singing, I do teach private singing lessons, and I also have my subscription group, SingWise Academy, in which I offer all sorts of group training, but also give some individualized attention and feedback and analysis of singing. So let me know how I can help you reach your singing goals.